everyone. Today is Friday, February 24th. My name is Evan. Welcome back to another edition of Stock Market Weekly, episode 672, presented by The Trade Risk, where it is our job to break down the most important trends, price action, and noteworthy moves that you may have missed across financial markets this week. And we're going to jump right into it here. So, it was a risk off week for equities to say the least. It was a short week here, so four days worth of trading volume uh, on the week when you're looking at those statistics might look a little bit light, but it was a risk off week. We saw dollar trade to three month highs. We also saw the VIX get to the top end of its three month range. So we talk a lot about dollar and volatility in VIX, and we often will say, you know, the dollar is a wrecking ball for risk assets. That's not our quote. That's pretty common knowledge out there. And we're seeing it continue to take place here as the dollar catches a bid. We continue to see some weakness, some softness in equity markets. Now, part of that is um, what we saw on Friday, which was PCE data. So the latest uh, expectations are in terms of inflation, which we know the Fed looks at the PCE numbers, and they continue to come in uh, a little bit hotter than expected. And so uh, the market appears to be sort of coming to grips or reality with the fact that the Fed is in fact going to be you know, uh, higher for longer in terms of its federal funds rates. Now, one sector and individual stock, uh, specifically calling out NVIDIA here, is looking a little bit different than most of the market. Semiconductors are catching a good bid and or at least just showing some good relative strength on this in this market. And so we're going to talk about that throughout this video. Now, if we take a look at the performance on the week, you can see it was a sea of red here, basically an even race to the downside, everything getting sold off unanimously here, about 3% lower across the board, US stocks uh, and international stocks, all the like. You can see the one month numbers now all turning negative here. So what started off as such a strong rosy year, we're starting to cut in to uh, the bulk of those gains that we made in the first four weeks of the year. Now, if we take a look at our trends here, you can see again, we've got this mixed picture, but still getting a little more red intact here. So the short term trends all declining for the second week in a row. Uh, medium term, we're still hanging in there. So we still do have rising uh, midterm trends intact here for the NASDAQ, the Russell and international stocks. And even again, long term, that 200 SMA is still, in, in fact, uh, rising here for the for the uh, Russell 2000 and for international stocks. So you've got this kind of mixed picture here, uh, which is, you know, again, frustrating, I think, both sides of uh, the tape, frankly. Now, volatility environment, though, this hasn't been too kind. And you can see the VIX now back north of 20, the NASDAQ getting up closer to the upper 20s, closer to that 30 level, and the, and the Russell 2000 kind of in the middle of those two, around 25. So so all of this was uh, higher here for volatility this week. So basically more fear, more anxiety, more concern out there. And we're getting kind of bid up to these uh, highest levels again that we've seen in the past three months here. This has kind of been the upper end of where volatility tends to spike to. And then you tend to get a nice bounce in the market and you see volatility unwind. We'll see if that is the case this time around uh, or if this time is in fact different. Now, in terms of market internals, uh, this is concerning here in, in terms of the weakness that we are continuing to see. So again, we keep a close track on this. Basically, you know, we've seen in, in, in terms of at least the start of the year, uh, the number of new highs pick up to the upside, finally starting to outpace the number of stocks hitting new lows. We talked about that trend finally kind of changing character for the first time in, in really most of this bear market the year plus. Uh, but now you're starting to see things soften up and weaken a little bit. We did still get more more stocks hitting 52 week highs this week than lows so that is a silver lining but it's getting pretty thin here so again you got to keep an eye on this ratio if we start getting a very strong tick up here in the number of stocks at 52 week lows then uh, you know that is definitely going to be a concern here over the intermediate term so so far uh, weakness and uh, we're going to have to see if this gets defended here next week. Now, if we look at our sort of sentiment measure here, 
Uh, speaking of volatility is the put call ratio. So we're including this. This is coming from IBD's website. So their digital uh, sign up platform here. You get a link right here to support the show. IBD is supporting the show for us. So thank you to IBD. Uh, but this data is, is coming into 224. So I would expect that, in fact, we're probably getting north of one uh, when this finally updates for Friday's data, which is, you know, getting to a more kind of fearful level in the market. More folks running out there buying protection, buying, um, you know, insurance on their portfolios. When you get a lot of insurance being purchased, well, uh, that typically means things um, and, the, and the worry to go further down uh, starts to dissipate because folks have purchased their insurance. So uh, keep an eye on this. We'll keep an eye on the reading here. But but definitely getting a little more into that fearful territory. Now, if we go to the sector performance on the week, it was just energy, uh, the energy sector here that was eking out a small gain. Remember, that was hit pretty hard the last few weeks, but it did manage to kind of hang in there pretty flat this week, along with materials, which held in there pretty well. And then consumer staples were in the third spot, still down 1.3%, though, for staples. On the downside, very risky uh, sort of uh, flavor to the market here, consumer discretionary, communication services, excuse me, and real estate down almost 4% across those three sectors. Yields continue to be a problem. So again, uh, we are now right back to knocking on the door of 4% for the 10-year treasury yield. Uh, this is ratcheting up very fast here. It first started with the short end of the curve, which has just continued to march higher. Uh, we talked about that over the last few few weeks. Uh, this time, we're starting to see a little more in this on this mid and, and, and longer uh, duration starting to uh, ratchet up here in terms of its uh, interest rates. And again, you can see, uh, well, we don't have it shown here, but uh, the, the, the 210 spread uh, very, you know, steeply uh, inverted negative there uh, as well, and not really new, but uh, continues to, to be problematic of an overhang. Uh, now, in terms of uh, commodities and uh, Dollar performance this week. Again, you can see dollar was up 1.39%. That's a big move for the dollar index. We're going to look at those charts in the part two of this video. Uh, natural gas looks uh, like it's trying to rebound here. Again, 10% move. Uh, sounds exciting. Sounds, sounds you know, uh, strong. But this, of course, has been absolutely hammered over the past three months. So the fact that it's bouncing back here, although it does look like it, prop, you know, is, is, is trying to put in that that at least short term bottom there it seems like it's doing it so um we'll see if it can add on those gains but still looks terrible uh longer term uh ag was down gold copper silver bitcoin all of these were down here in the face of a strong dollar now finally our positioning here so we finally got we'll talk about Lamerick first so this is our short-term swing trading system and it's finally starting to get involved here in the market and it was really the latter part of this week thursday friday uh doing the bulk of its buying wednesday thursday friday so into this market weakness finally starting to ratchet up its long exposure that's exactly what i would expect it to do it has been very timid on the on the long side and thankfully so because uh not until the selling has really started to accelerate is when it's starting to take a bite here uh and and you know kind of lean into the long side of the market i haven't looked quite yet what it's got on deck for monday uh but uh this is kind of nice to to see finally some long exposure getting put on even though it is dicey in the short term uh but this is what this trading system does it fades extremes um and uh again kind of acting exactly as i would expect our medium term system merlin here again has still been uh had its toes kind of dipped into this market again it's been in some uh, I guess non non uh, technology and sort of um, I don't want to say cyclical, but kind of more on that value stride uh, that it's been looking after. And so it is still about 75 percent invested, not really buying anything new here. It's been sitting with about, you know, that 25 percent buffer for some time now. And so uh, it's combined here. Our, our trade risk index is actually at the highest level. It's been probably all year in terms of long exposure, about 70 percent right now. So if you want to learn more about these trading systems, we got a lot more information on our website about them, including performance, performance reports, performance commentary, uh, how they work and all that good stuff and we have trials available so check it out on our website and we'll be back here in just a second with part two all right, we are back. We've got TC2000 open. We are looking at the S&P 500. It's a weekly time frame of the cash settled market. So each bar represents one week worth of trading. And I've actually dialed it back to last week's uh, chart. 
So basically where we recorded last Friday, where we did last week's update. And this is what we had in terms of coming into this week. We had this digestion pattern here. And basically, you know, what we asked ourselves last week, the title of last week's video was was equity market digestion or or a lower high top, right? Like that's those were the two scenarios we were basically playing out. Is this healthy constructive digestion in in terms of a market that had ramped up throughout January, then started to consolidate sideways? Was it fueling up for another leg? Or was this in fact just going to be another lower high rollover and start a new leg lower? And so when we now flash forward to of course this week, we can see, well, it certainly looks like the last it certainly looks like uh, this is going to be some type of lower high top and we are starting another leg down. We broke convincingly below this consolidation zone. And so if we go down to a daily chart here and we look at our trusty old roadmap that we've been using, you can see we are now very much below this 4100 zone. And we have even lost this little minor 4010, 4015 area um, as well. So when we look at this price action this week, it was a gap down this this Tuesday, I mean, set the scene. Uh, it, we, we gap lower markets were closed on Monday. So we, we gap down on Tuesday and then basically had a hard selling day and closed at the lows for Tuesday. We chopped around Wednesday, bounced back Thursday, had a good volat volatile session on Thursday. And then on Friday was just hit with another gap down. And again, tails here. So a couple of things to know. First off, you know, we've certainly lost all these key levels. And so when we look at just this, where we are in this big technical landscape here, going back 10 months plus, I mean, we are just in no man's land. There's no way to sugarcoat it. This is just a market that is now stuck in this big old range. It is messy. It is unclear. It is not that exciting of a spot to be in. Now, if we look though at maybe some of the you know uh, relative ratios here or indicators Bollinger Bands for instance you can see we are now back to the lower Bollinger Band we haven't seen the lower Bollinger Band since December and the markets now have, cons have consistently sold off enough over the past three weeks to pierce below the lower Bollinger Band this usually musters up some type of bounce you can also see you know the fact that we are getting these tails over the past three sessions two two and a half sessions I guess um, Thursday you know we really drove off of the lows Friday again was still a down session, but we drove off of the lows. And so there is something to be said for, you know, um, buyers trying to kind of show some signs of life here. The, the, the most, you know, optimistic thing, I guess I could say, and again, this is very subjective and, and in my own personal bubble, but when I look across social media, when I look across, you know, uh, just social landscape in general, Twitter, I don't see any bulls out there. I see very few bulls that are left standing here. Uh, the macro folks, you know, that I follow, I mean, they've been basically bearish this whole way up. They've been bearish for a while and they've been, you know, again, generally speaking, right uh, to be bearish on this market. The technical folks now all pretty much bearish here as we've rolled over. We're starting to lose, you know, all the moving averages that folks look at and trend lines and all that stuff. So they're they're bearish. I don't really see anyone out there excited about this market anymore. And to me, you know, that is uh, a subtle sign of that. It, that's something right. That shows you sentiment is kind of washed out or in despair. You've got the VIX now, which is back to it's the top end of its three month range. I mean, the VIX really hasn't been able to sustain any type of uh, consistent trading above 21, 22 for very long. So, uh, you know, again, this time could be different. We could finally be getting a breakout of VIX back into the, you know, mid 20s and upper 20s. TBD on that. I still not necessarily holding my breath there, but uh, it is certainly possible. But the fact that, again, you know, sentiment seems pretty frustrated, negative, pessimistic, and, you know, VIX back up towards the highs here leads me to believe, you know, at least at least in the short term, probably good enough for some type of uh, bounce. Again, is it enough though? Will it be enough? That is going to be the big question here because again, uh, uh, structurally, we need to get back over 4,100. I mean, that's just, again, the, the, the big level that I'm still going to hang my hat on now going forward. That is where we just spend some time consolidating. We just lost that level. So if we are below it, then yes, I uh, totally submit that it is a tough uh, case to make for the bull case to, to, um, uh, to, to be long while we're below this area. Uh, but again, in the short term, in the very, very short term, next couple of few days or so, uh, it is certainly 
notable the washout in sentiment. Let's at least call it that. Um, I think getting a start over 40-20, you know, would be something, but... Um, Right now, the market just seems to be kind of here in no man's land, uh, at least in terms of S&P 500. Now, if we translate that to, say, the Qs, the Qs are, you know, in a slightly better spot still. Um, they are arguably losing the, the the key level here. So for Qs, this is the this is the zone we've been looking at. It's basically been 294. And so we spent Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday trading right at this kind of what I would consider to be a very important level for this market. And Friday, we gapped down. And again, we put in this doji here. It was just underneath the three days worth of trading. And it's, you know, it's just in that realm of noise here. It's a 1%. So I'm going to, you know, submit that I, obviously I don't love the price action from this week uh, by any stretch. But if we do get a pop here, if we can push up, if if Friday was the low here for Qs and we can squeeze here, don't forget about, you know, the potential long trade, the trapped kind of um, short trade here. I, I do think this could uh, squeeze a little bit. I don't know if it's a high probability. Again, I don't have any direct positions. I'm not playing for anything specifically myself or anything like that. But uh, just keeping an open, objective mind here. The fact that we, you know, are treading sideways here, digesting the market's trying to show it cares about this 293 zone. If we can push up here and start reclaiming those lows and push over 293, 294, uh, the cues could muster up some type of low. And again, it is still not that hard to imagine a consolidation here. And again, I'm not trying to draw anything specific, but just a, a consolidation that after this type of run up, you know, has some type of look like this. And even if it does, you know, chop around a little bit more, if it can hold, you know, say, to the 30 40 percent retrace of this big rally here you know that it, it, that looks good to me right so we'll see tbd we don't know yet um everything is is speculative here in terms of uh the fact that uh or if it could even pop uh right now short-term trend is down right now it's in a tough spot so uh the battle's still kind of going on here for cues as i see it iwm same thing i mean the battle is it's, it's just right at this zone that we care about and and it's right at the lower end it's testing it it could be throwing folks off sides right before a rip so again don't I'm not saying it's high probability, keeping an open mind that um, uh, it's still in that zone of where uh, I would love to see buyers step back in. I have no direct positions there. Obviously, you saw short term, uh, our short term system is, is starting to buy in here, Lamerick. Uh, so we'll see if it, you know, uh, kind of, you know, just coincides with that. Uh, but uh, for now, that's kind of my thoughts there on the major markets. It's messy. It's pessimistic, but um, I think lots of folks and sentiment wise uh, could just be shaping up for some type of short term bounce. And we'll see if that can actually have some real legs to it. Um, so that is everything I think I wanted to say about the major markets. Let's look at um, we already looked at VIX dollar right? So this is the dollar chart now, four or five weeks in a row, green candles just retracing here. And uh, this is obviously putting a lot of pressure on markets right now. If we look at do uh, the dollar Bollinger Band, you can see it's kind of riding the upper Bollinger Band here coming in, you know, maybe to some overhead supply again. There's lots of factors in here in terms of how you weight this and, and what the dollar is up against in terms of currency pairs. But uh, regardless, still getting a nice move there. Gold, exact opposite, right? It just liter literally looks like a flip of the dollar here. So gold up, 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 right? As the dollar was down, down, down. Now dollar is, you know, retracing up and gold retracing down. So that's basically an exact mirror image. Natural gas, wanted to mention that. Uh, so look at this, you know, weekly looking bar here. Um, you know, it's extremely tough to call a bottom in, you know, big downtrends like this. It does feel like some bottoming action here. If I had to put my betting hat on, I'm not, I don't have a position on it. I'm not going to take a position in it. It's just not my type of, you know, ideal setup or, or interest. Uh, but it does look like it's trying to wash out here. And I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, natural gas either trade higher or at least sideways, uh, in, you know, between 730 and, you know, in, in this general area. So um, we'll see. But uh, it does look like, you know, good volume coming in, trying to stage a nice uh, little bit of a bounce here for natural gas. 
and oh semiconductors so nvidia so here is an impressive looking chart again semiconductors nvidia one of the most influential uh semi companies out there continues to just charge higher here and um it is clearly looking a lot different than the other you know areas of this market semiconductors you can look at smh you could look at soxx i believe yes both of these looking much more constructive than uh the broad market it does look a little more similar to q's but it's consolidating above the december highs uh in both of these areas here and uh you know just towards some pretty important zones. So keep an eye on semiconductors. Again, can't expect them to just lift entirely the, the, the whole market, but they are a very important kind of uh, sector for just risk appetite and, and overall direction, mo mostly obviously speaking to tech. Uh, so keep an eye on them, but this is obviously the bright spot. I think if you're trying to make a bull case, you're, you're certainly pointing your, your, your attention here. Um, and uh, we'll see how this shakes out next week. But for now, you know, semis looking pretty strong wrong so i wanted to wrap it up with uh, our tr150 watch list so again i had some questions come in on this basically our tr150 watch list this is our bullpen of stocks that we are looking at that we are trading that merlin is trading so these are strong stocks that meet a lot of different criteria i can let you read you know just read about it on our website if you want to learn more uh but i mean just look at these charts for instance right you can just see straight up here this one uh, not so not so straight up on there um you can go right down the list most of these stocks are going to show some pretty good relative strength they're going to be better than the average market uh they tend to have more of a growth profile on it but really what i'm pointing out here is just the sectors that are showing up it is still pretty much dominated by energy stocks for the most part that are still showing on this list uh we do have a lot of healthcare and industrials as well so it's very industrial healthcare dow focused so to speak and very similar to what we kind of spoke uh, mentioned last week uh, we do have some semiconductors here uh, some technology names not a big bulk of uh, this list is in is in technology right now so most of what we're tracking here that shows you know interesting risk and reward scenarios and just good general relative strength tends to be in kind of what i would consider dow related stocks so that is uh it for me leave a comment below let me know are you a bull do you have any bull case that you can make in uh the comments below i'd love to hear it because i don't see anyone that is excited about this market again doesn't mean we should take trades just for that sole only reason uh but it is at least getting uh my spidey sense to perk up so leave a comment below let me know your thoughts and i hope you have a great weekend every friday we do these videos long form market analysis try and be as objective as possible hopefully you enjoyed and if you did uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel like it if you did and we'll see you back here next week have a great weekend